Ever since astronomers have been able to investigate the supposed beginning of the universe better than ever before, thanks to the James Webb mission launched this year, the news has been pouring in. In fact, the very first picture supplied by the largest space telescope of all time showed things that questioned standing cosmology and theories of the beginning of the universe. All too eager scientists and strict opponents of the Big Bang Theory have already proclaimed, James Webb finally proves the Big Bang Theory wrong. But find out if this is really true and what the James Webb Telescope really discovered in this video. What's triggered these proclamations? Since NASA presented the first images of the super telescope to the public in July of this year, the world of astronomers, cosmologists, and physicists has been upside down. Of course, everyone had equally hoped to learn more about the true origins and dimensions of the universe through the reach of the most expensive and best space telescope of all time. With a range of at least 13.5 billion light years, it was clear that with the new telescope, humans would, for the first time, be able to almost look back to the hypothesized Big Bang. This is said to have occurred 13.8 billion years ago, but this assumption will no longer hold in the future. The Oldest Galaxies in the Universe NASA and the U.S. President Joe Biden proudly made public the first image on July 11, 2022. Here, it's mainly the galaxy cluster SMAC 0723, about 4.6 billion light years away, that can be seen. The fact that these galaxies look as if they are pressed together in a cluster is due to the gravitational lensing effect. In fact, the galaxies in real space are not so compressed in one spot. The camera technology only compresses the image in order to get distances of several billion light years on one picture. This should make it clear that this image is not a realistic or true-to-scale representation of the cosmos. Astronomers and cosmologists measure the actual distances between the stars, galaxies, and other phenomena in space using techniques for determining the speed of light and the so-called red light shift. The higher their value, the farther an object is from Earth and the older it is as well. The first investigations of the galaxies glowing red in the image and the most distant galaxies caused a scientific sensation only a few days after the image was published. Quickly, it was clear that our previous picture of the origin history of the cosmos would have to be corrected. The oldest perfect galaxies, recorded by the Hubble Space Telescope, had redshift values of 10 to 11 z, and had thus developed approximately 400 million years after the Big Bang. So far, so good. And up to this point in the cosmic calendar, the Hubble data also fit with the current theories of the Big Bang, which state, among other things, that the first star clusters and galaxies may have existed from about 300 to 400 million years after the Big Bang. Now, however, the James Webb Telescope has a completely different reach and can look back even further. According to previous assumptions, the telescope would only have provided evidence of the formation of the first stars or even gas clouds in the depths of space. At best, James Webb might have found traces of the Big Bang. After all, the estimated range of the new telescope is at least 13.5 billion years. It would have been only a cosmic stone's throw to the Big Bang 13.8 billion years ago. But back to the deep field image that has caused so much hullabaloo. This beautiful, colorful image shows at least 88 fixed galaxies with redshifts between 11 and 20 z. The age of these galaxies is thus sufficient for a cosmic leap. Thus, the age of these galaxies reaches back to times that fall below the magic mark of 200 million years after the Big Bang. Now, according to previous theories, there should not have been much more than dust, gases, and darkness in this so-called dark age of the cosmos. The fact that at this time, complete, very massive, and luminous galaxies existed shows that something cannot be correct in the past theory of the Big Bang. The Big Message Big Bang Theory is Wrong The facts up to this point were already sufficient for some biting opponents of the Big Bang Theory 
to flood the net immediately after the publication of the data, with messages postulating the clear refutation of the Big Bang Theory. But this is not, in fact, warranted. Leading in the scientific battle about theories was the U.S. American para-astronomer and Big Bang critic Eric Lerner. In a much noticed, but also much criticized publication, Lerner quoted the renowned U.S. astronomer and Big Bang proponent, Allison Kirkpatrick, as saying, Right now, I'm lying awake at three in the morning, wondering if everything I've ever done was wrong. Lerner placed Kirkpatrick in the journalistic setting of a desperate scientist who had unofficially admitted that everything, or rather, the Big Bang theory, was wrong. Big Bang defenders, Big Bang opponents, and supporters of completely different theories about the origin of the universe have since delivered battling assertions, counterstatements, scientific justifications, and every manner of new speculation. The already mentioned astronomer Alison Kirkpatrick explained later to the US magazine Space that her statement had been taken completely out of context by Eric Lerner and had been misused for his lurid theses. Kirkpatrick does not see the discovery so far as evidence that speaks against the Big Bang. Rather, the discoveries could indicate that stars and galaxies formed much earlier than previously thought. So we can't yet speak of proofs against the Big Bang theory or a clear refutation at this point. The Theory of Big Bang Let us consider the Big Bang at this point once again. About 100 years ago, the French astrophysicist and priest Georges Lemaitre and the U.S. astronomer Edwin Hubble researched the distances and motion properties of galaxies in space at about the same time and yet independently of each other. Among other things, they found that the more distant celestial bodies in galaxies were moving away from each other faster than the closer ones. From this observation, the two astronomers concluded in simple terms that the universe was expanding. In the same era, atomic physics was making significant progress. The two astronomers combined some approaches of both disciplines and finally came to the conclusion that the expansion and the whole development of the universe could be explained only with a starting point. According to the Big Bang Theory, 13.8 billion years ago, all material phenomena of the universe were contained in a kind of primordial seed. The idea of this seed corresponded approximately to those of an atom, or better yet, a tiny and nevertheless incredibly potent primeval particle. This mini-particle appeared, for as yet unexplained reasons, in a nothingness which existed before the time of the Big Bang, or perhaps not at all. All clear? Finally, this primeval particle was set in motion by an also not more exactly explicable event. Whether it really exploded with a bang, or whether the birth of the universe was a completely quiet process, we do not know. The previous calculations assumed that the universe was about 10 trillion degrees hot at the moment of the Big Bang. Only one second after the event, the freshly born universe is said to have cooled down so drastically that the first elementary particles such as quarks and gluons were formed. Fractions of a second later, protons and neutrons formed the building blocks of future atomic nuclei. Nevertheless, protons and neutrons could form only very unstable structures of hydrogen and helium about three minutes after the Big Bang. For solid compounds like atoms and molecules, it was still much too hot. After this first phase of the formation and the nuclear fusions of elements, according to previous assumptions, there was calm in space for a very, very long time. The cosmos was a dark, turbid primeval soup and cooled down more and more until at a temperature of about 2,700 degrees, the formation of the first stable atoms and gases was possible. Finally, immense forces accelerated whole gas clouds, whereby these became spiral-shaped formations in which the first stars developed. With them, luminosity came into the universe. Here, we would be, according to past assumptions, 100 to 200 million years after the Big Bang. But now we know very probably that at this point, there were already complete and very well-developed galaxies. A galaxy with a redshift of 20z would have originated according to past measuring methods in the period before 200 million years after the Big Bang. And as it looks, such galaxies exist. If you've been listening quite attentively, 
You noticed words like probably and as it looks because there is so far no proof for the true existence of galaxies with 20z. Some researchers propose that something could be wrong with the previous assumptions about the significance of the redshift or also with other interstellar measuring techniques. This cannot be completely ruled out. Realistically, we have only very few capabilities for measuring the universe from the Earth. No one has yet traveled with the cosmic folding rule, and so far, only one man-made object has flown into interstellar space, the Voyager probe. It's certain that the calculations of the astronomers within our solar system showed good reliability so far. After all, we humans have managed to send probes to all the planets in the system several times over the last 100 years. And this would not have been possible without reliable values on distances and times. Nevertheless, researchers in our own solar system have been amazed again and again over the last decades. Hardly any probe has fully confirmed the previous picture of our cosmic neighbors. The real images and measurement data provided quite different impressions and usually big surprises. So why should this be any different with the data from the James Webb Telescope? So what does this mean for science? To conclude, let's now look at possible further scenarios. According to the current state of knowledge, it would be quite possible that the Big Bang existed in spite of the new data. It then perhaps took place 15, 20, or 100 billion years ago. If it should turn out that our measuring methods for the speed of light and redshift are wrong, a completely new picture of the cosmos could emerge. Perhaps the next solar systems are then not four or 12 light years away, but only some few trillion miles. It would be conceivable that still more and still older galaxies can be found, taking us farther away from the idea of a starting point. Up to now, two further anomalies were noticed in the photographs of James Webb that can possibly deliver clues. So, for example, the galaxy Sears 1749 with a redshift of scarcely 17z made itself known when researchers arrived at extremely contradictory measuring data. This galaxy, which was formed about 220 million years after the assumed Big Bang, is spatially in the neighborhood of galaxies, which have values of 5z and are thus much younger. Sears 1749, about which we reported in detail in another video, got the nickname Schrodinger's Galaxy because it's at two places and in two times at the same time. These data could help the theories of the multiverse or the pocket universe to new popularity. Or maybe we are only in a computer simulation in which an intelligent and changeable cosmos plays cat and mouse with us. Whenever we think to have found a solution and explanations, this flexible universe eludes all attempts of explanation and serves up a new task for researchers to puzzle over. Basically, it would be boring if we really knew everything and nothing new and no big surprises awaited us in the vastness of space. Or what do you think? Tell us your opinion about the discussion of the scientists and how the universe could have originated. We look forward to your comments and a lively discussion on the topic.